alles, was sich dreht. Everything that rotates requires bearing. The invention of the plane bearing is 3000 years old. With the development of the wheel, it became necessary to combine the axle and the wheel with two different materials to achieve the rotational movement. And the whole thing was greased. In this respect, this was the first form of plane bearing. And today's plane bearings still work in the same way. Ich habe eine Achse, die in der Mitte sitzt. You have an axle in the center, surrounded by a bearing. And ideally, the two surfaces do not make contact. They are supported by oil pressure. Of course, sometimes a machine, whether it is a wind turbine or something else, comes to a stop and the axle rests on the outer bearing. The system eventually needs to start up again. And then there is some kind of friction. You expect the soft plane bearing material to have what's called an emergency dry running property. This means the bearing continues to work for a while, even with insufficient lubrication. Copper, tin and bronze are all materials with excellent sliding properties. When a system stops and restarts, you need these sliding properties to prevent damage. If you were to only use steel materials, which are the base materials, and they would come into contact with each other, when starting up, you would quickly experience galling and eventually damage to the components. That's why coatings are applied to provide emergency running properties. We've been working on finding alternative solutions besides the energy intensive and process restricted method of casting for a long time. Verfahrensbedingt stark eingeschränkten Prozess des Gießens. Early experiments with laser cladding showed that it had to be a diode laser, simply due to the technical requirements for welding tin or copper based materials. It only worked with this method. Of course, there were other unsuccessful attempts. Since then, we've become familiar with the laser technology from Laserline in our systems. And we now have four systems, all from Laserline. Wir haben Technik vertraut und haben inzwischen vier Anlagen, die alle aus dem Hause Laserline kommen. Admos uses our diode lasers in the mid power range, around 10 kilowatts, with a beam quality we call Line 100. This means there's a one millimeter fiber attached, which allows us to produce a medium sized focal spot, somewhere between two and eight millimeters. What's particularly interesting for us is that Laserline is also very involved in developing new components that help us improve our technology. Whether it's camera systems, sensors, new welding nozzles, or process instructions for specific applications. Our lower power lasers are mainly used for white metals, and the 12 kilowatt diode lasers are used for bronze alloys, where we need higher energy density. The bond between the tin or copper based material and the steel must be of absolute unbreakable quality, with high bonding values and no defects like voids or cracks. When working with bronze or copper based materials, you also need to consider factors such as back reflections. The laser beam hitting the component reflects off bronze or copper based materials. And these reflections shouldn't go directly back into the optics, but rather past the nozzle. That means the process is often slightly adjusted to minimize temperature on the cladding nozzles. We have various optics from Laserline that allow us to create different build heights, enabling us to coat plane bearings with a minimum internal diameter of 100 millimeters. There are no upper limits in terms of our systems and clamping technology. We can work with components up to one meter in diameter. We can coat both internally and externally. Wir haben im Vergleich zu bisherigen ähm, Verfahrensergebnissen wie Compared to previous methods like casting, as well as spraying or other similar coating processes, we've seen significant advantages with laser cladding. Auftragsweisen festgestellt. Einer der wichtigsten ist, dass ich einer One of the most important is the extremely high bond strength between the two materials, which is much higher than what's achievable with other methods. There are other advantages especially noticeable in the past two years. For example, material savings on non-ferrous metals exceed 70%. We use significantly fewer non-ferrous metals than in the casting process. And energy efficiency has improved by about 90% compared to casting. So it's not just a good process, 
but also a future proof one. Gutes Verfahren, sondern auch ein zukunftsrechtes Verfahren. Der spannende Faktor ist natürlich, dass die Industrie The exciting part is that the industry is familiar with centrifugal casting and needs time to get used to laser cladding. The technological benefits are often understood by customers, but we also have to convince them of the quality. Many customers have said, what you have is great, Mr. Hoseman, but as long as you're the only one doing it, we can't buy it from you. That has changed in the last two or three years. There are now more companies working in this field, which is good for the market. This isn't about competition, but rather about showing that the laser process is gaining industrial recognition. Auch industriell ähm, anerkannt wird. Wir sehen heute ganz klar sehr häufig die Kleidlager, wie man Nowadays we commonly see plain bearings in the traditional sense as a round component with an axle rotating inside. But there are of course many other components that need to be supported with sliding bearings. These don't have to be radially symmetrical. They can be flat or more complex shapes. We're starting to see new requests from various industries that are learning they can use lasers for these applications. This means that we are no longer dependent on this radially symmetrical component, but we can also produce flat surfaces or even more complex geometries. So there is also a shift in thinking towards this new technology. We are currently testing large sliding plates, which we've never produced before. So that we are already seeing a trend that the components that can actually be coated with the laser can develop far beyond the previous applications. Bisher in Anwendungen entwickeln können. Und das einfach ist, glaube ich, ein entscheidender Faktor. Es sitzen Menschen, die... And that's a key factor, I believe. The people here are passionate about this technology, understand how materials work, how to clad them, how to process them, and where the limitations are. They know how to adjust parameters. When you see the quality, which is actually also produced in series here, our technology is a beam source, which is initially given to a customer, and which then simply becomes an end product, which is really at the highest global level. It's exciting to see. In the production of composite plane bearings, laser cladding is now indispensable and can't easily be replaced by other methods. And the advantages will become even more apparent in the coming years.